Is it safe, do you think, to climb to the top? No. No, it's more than dangerous, especially <laughs> in the watchtower here. Yeah. If you climb, just you open the windows and shoot you, maybe. Here is a question. As an influencer, what should you do when you come across injustice? And you will, especially if you travel. Spending time in West Bank, Palestine made this question feel important, and this film is an attempt to answer it. I'm Nate Murphy, a climber and filmmaker, and for the past four years I have been travelling around the world rock climbing in amazing places and working on interesting projects. We came to Israel for some sightseeing and climbing. On our whim, we booked a night at Banksy's Hotel in the West Bank. So we're just trying to get to the thing the hotel but this is um closed door so close but so far huh? we're trying to get over there huh? yeah you can't fool me is that it yeah yeah finally we made it to the hotel so we went out to explore Bethlehem. This is the Church of the Nativity, which is a historic site where Jesus was apparently born. Every single like little sect has their place. They've got a little place like an embassy, a religious embassy in Jerusalem. This one was uh, inaugurated by Kaiser Wilhelm II, who was a German emperor. Um, definitely a holy guy, but he did start World War I. We noticed a lot of these like pictures, like posters with like a guy, he's got his machine gun. We saw the same sort of posters and we didn't know they're memorial things. To be honest, other than some basic reading and hearing about the illegal settlements over the years, I knew very little about the Israeli occupation or this wall. What we've realised is there's Israelis building all these walls. They've actually made like a really good crack climbing skill. You've got like splitters right here, it's just finger locks. So if you ever give up with the, you know, general segregation and wall building. They should leave them and have them as a crack school. This scene started off as some climate chat, which is pretty ordinary for the content of my channel. At this point, we did not know where our time here would lead. You can get to the top on that. We just need a bit of traffic on the route so it gets quite dusty inside the concrete crack. But I feel like once it's, you know, once people find out about this splitter crack climbing destination, it will be clean pretty quickly. So this is Banksy's uh, hotel called Waldorf Hotel. Um, we stayed in the bunk beds for the night and today we're going to go on a tour um, of the refugee camp and the librarian so it should be interesting to see another perspective on Israel. Before heading out onto the tour we had a look around the museum inside Banksy's hotel. The museum painted a pretty grim picture of the Israeli occupation. Is it okay if we film some stuff? Yes. Is My name is Marwan Al Faraja. I am Palestinian refugees. I am born and grew up in Bethlehem, but we lost our hometown, my parents' town, my grandfather's town inside the Green Line, and I'm refugees in my own country. The Green Line served as a de facto border for the State of Israel from 1949 until the Six-Day War in 1967. The Six-Day War moved the border further into Palestinian territory. Over the years, settlements have continued to take more land, and the separation wall itself grabbed yet more territory, creating a new hard border between Israel and Palestine. I would like to share with you what's the meaning of the war for us, for me personally, as a human. Not Muslim, as a Christian, as a Jewish, as a human. 
I need to talk about the circle. It's a research made in 2008, six years after the occupation start, and after we start as refugees, and which number we reach in this four country. In Jordan, 1,151,000 refugees. In Lebanon, 422,000. In Syria, 461,000. In West Bank, 762,000. In Gaza, 1,073,000 refugees. It's only research. Good? Here. You familiar with this example of a circle map? From what Marwan had to say, it was clear that the situation here is no joke. Sure, the wall is imposing for a tourist like me, but the effect it has on the people it was designed to control has been far-reaching. The wall was built after the second Palestinian uprising, which grew violent. After a campaign of suicide bombings, Israelis started to work on a continuous barrier around the whole of Palestine, annexing about 10% of the West Bank land in the process. In this respect, the wall worked. Suicide bombings reduced, and there have been none since 2008. So, what is the problem? I'll get on to that. But first, back to the question. Do influencers have a responsibility to talk about injustice when they come across it? I have been giving this some thought, and I think that, as an influencer, and perhaps in a way we all are, injustice appears to us in one of the following three scenarios. Firstly, it's invisible injustice, where you are blissfully ignorant of the injustice around you and therefore have no agency. And by agency, I mean the capacity to have an impact or make a difference to the overall issue. Secondly, it's visible injustice, but for which you have little or no agency. And finally, visible justice, where you also have agency. For example, perhaps I go to a restaurant in Thailand and unbeknownst to me, the staff are refugees from Myanmar and are exploited due to their lack of legal status. Here, I simply don't know. Perhaps I don't even know they aren't Thai. This is invisible injustice. Then, perhaps someone tells me of the staff situation, but actually I have very little agency. As a YouTuber, if I made a video about the staff, it could have direct negative repercussions for them. My videos have hardly any reach to Thai people or those who might be able to affect the policies that drive the problem. And by doing something, it could make matters worse. Now, perhaps later, as I travel through Thailand, I find out that elephants used for elephant rides go through incredible cruelty in order to make them submissive and that support in this industry is unethical, which it is. Here, the injustice is visible and I have agency. Through my channel, I can educate other tourists and help them reduce the demand for elephant rides and perhaps support ethical elephant tourism. In cases where you have little or no agency, doing work to profile it, aside from being largely pointless based on the impact you are going to have, it is probably best not to waste your audience attention on issues they don't impact. By being relevant and therefore selective, the issues you do raise become more important to your viewers. This is Ein Prat, a climbing destination. Beautiful sandstone walls with great climbing. But to get here, you have to travel through a settlement, which means that Palestinian climbers have to take a long walk around the settlers' fence, despite it being well inside the West Bank. Is it really ethical for us to journey here, climb on occupied land after traveling through an illegal settlement, and say nothing of the obvious discrimination and injustice? Would that make us complicit with the theft of the land and the restriction of access for Palestinians? So, back to the wall. What is the problem with it? Over a decade since the last suicide bombing, the wall system, powered with a military budget three times the West Bank's GDP, enables near total control. Resources are also controlled. Water is taken from stolen land and sold back to Palestinians. This water can be cut off. As Marwan demonstrates, this is why Palestinians have extra storage tanks on their roofs. My friend, you see, it's either refugee camp refugees community, over the roofs, how many plaque tanks for water. Mm -hmm. They put these tanks over the roofs just because the water sometimes cut here in this camp, 20, 25 days, 30 days. 
because everything under the occupation control. If you look on the other side, in this mountain there, this building, it's a settlement, illegal settlement inside 6-7 border called Gilu settlement. No any tanks, you don't have to put any tanks over the roofs. 24 hours they have direct water from the company. Many people working in Israel, in Jerusalem, in Israel side. Everyone need to go to Israel, cross the checkpoint, cross the border, to go to Israel from West Bank, have to get a permission, permit from Israel security side. For sure not everyone have this chance to get a permit. Anyone arrested in the past, if your brother arrest, maybe all the family be under blacklist. Sometimes they give part of the family permit and part of the family they don't give. Like especially in the holiday of Muslim people and holiday of Christian. This crazy suffering we under. This is something small, but it's a big issue. One thing not under occupation, you know what? Our mind and our heart only. Palestinians' movement is tightly controlled through a permit and checkpoint system that supposes every Palestinian is a potential terrorist and is used far more for control than security. Sadly, actually, this is the light side of the occupation. While in the middle of a 20-hour research binge, I found a newly reported example of settler violence where settlers had recently vandalised a Palestinian's olive grove as a reprisal for the Israeli army demolishing parts of their illegal settlement. There was no justice or any method of seeking it for the farmer. It is just a small example of the pattern of the Israeli settler program which takes and populates land deep into the West Bank. This often involves evicting Palestinians destroying their homes, acts of violence, intimidation and murder. Justice, when applied, lacks, well, justice. For example, while we were in Israel, a 16-year-old Israeli settler carried out a racist attack that killed a mother of eight and was given a six-month sentence for manslaughter. In comparison, in 2017, a 16-year-old Palestinian, Ahed Tamimi, slapped a soldier in the face, was tried in a military court and was sentenced to eight months in prison. You see this house is there? It's a settlement called Gilu Settlement. It's a legal settlement built over the land of 67 border. It's out, it's far from the green line. The most crazy human in the earth, this is the settlers' man. Soldiers and settlers are given close to impunity for the crimes against Palestinians, which gives settlers a carte blanche to terrorise villages upon whose land they encroach. When villagers protest these actions, they are met with tear gas, rubber bullets, real bullets, night raids, collective punishments and arrests. There is no justice and no effective form of protest. This is called plastic rubber bullet. But it's not plastic rubber bullet. Many people lost their eyes, their life because of the subans. It's heavy rubber bullet. And it's why it's heavy, you know? Look what we have inside. Mm. Iron, metal inside. It's like real bullet. Many people kill. Time the soldier shoot closer in the head of the children, the people, for sure, it's, you know, it's, it's not strong, it's not stone, not concrete. It's entered the head and killed many people. Marwan and his friend were showing us around the nearby refugee camp here in Bethlehem. This used to be the main entrance of the school. And this area had been under many times shooting. And this is the bullets. What's wrong with this building? Like, Why do you think there is a school without windows? Many kids, many times, have been injured inside the school. And that's why we decided to shut down. And these bullets come straight from the tower over there. This child, his name Abdurrahman Abidullah, his nickname Abud, you see the name Ab? Mm -hmm. Abud. He's 13 years old. In the 5th of October 2015, was have clashes here between the people, children, and the soldier open the gate up and go outside and start to shoot in the camp here in the people in the clashes. Can you imagine this? It's it's not normal. So when you come across injustice that is clearly visible and you have some agency, what do you do? Firstly, I would argue that saying nothing involves a certain degree of complicity. And secondly, the issues are always complex. A loose comment with poor understanding may do more harm than good, if anything, to your reputation. If you do raise an issue, avoiding making simplistic judgments or statements is not easy. You must be informed as much as possible, and that could be days or weeks of work. This is work you will not be paid for. Work that will lead some people to dislike you, especially in highly polarised issues with strong ideological or political narratives. 
it can put you at risk of abuse, state-based travel restrictions, or in extreme cases, violence. And it is work that, being outside of your usual dialogue, might just turn your audience off. So, why bother? Well, because complicity is not a moral option. In short, I think it is about potential impact and picking your issues. As a climber, to climb the wall is attractive regardless of politics. But like the graffiti that adorns the wall, the idea of climbing the 24-foot wall with no rope just in my trainers became an action with meaning, a subversive act, perhaps showing that the wall is not so impenetrable, that perhaps it is badly designed and poorly constructed. But first, I wanted to learn more about the risks. We realised the other day that these walls are really quite easy to climb. And yeah. you can climb these walls. Uh, but is it safe, do you think, to climb to the top? No, it's more than dangerous. Because in the tower have soldiers. If they, maybe they think by wrong, you are Palestinian. If he shoot you, he have reason to shoot you. Without reason, sometimes shoot people. Imagine time you climb and you give him reason to shoot you. So if we were going to try and send a route and top out on this wall, we're going to have to do it where there's no tower visibility on a, on a corner with no tower around it and then maybe you've got a good chance of not not getting shot you're right so adds a certain complexity and risk to climbing you don't normally have all the soldiers we have in west bank they are kids children they are like a machine under control because of this we have a lot of victim and many accident crazy accident happened yani time the soldier shot anyone palestinian if he said his answer be, I'm not feel security. I think he have a knife, he have bomb, he have gun. It's enough to close the file and no more conversation about this accident. Here, every day Israel kill people. As an influencer, do I have agency? For this issue, the US taxpayer matters and 40% of my audience come from the US. The US sends $3.8 billion of military aid to Israel every year. Jewish American citizens are wooed by Israel under the birthright scheme, where they, potentially with no Middle Eastern roots, are given more right to reside than a Palestinian whose family have lived there for generations. Let's face it, my impact is always likely to be pretty small. But you don't know what comes out of the discussions you create. You could create conversations with people that change people's minds and narratives. The world is run on ideas and ideologies are driven by narratives. After a week of intense research, my conclusion. There is no way to avoid saying it. The Palestinian people are being systematically oppressed using brutal methods. This is not to say that Palestinians have not thrown away chances for peace, that their politicians have not been corrupt, or that violence has ever been a successful strategy for them. It is not to say that defence against West Bank Palestinians was not warranted under previous administrations that pursued extreme ideological agendas and refused offers of peace that could have resulted in a two-state solution. But what this is to say is that what is happening right now under the current Israeli government against a people who are largely powerless is wrong. To oppress a people for long periods of time and enable settler terrorism to run unabated is awful behaviour. Not only do their actions continue to destroy the possibility of a two-state solution, but they add fuel to the ugly rise of anti-Semitism throughout the world today. Heavy-handed oppression does not bode well for a long-term peaceful solution. Not only that, but by making Israel look as bad as some of their despotic neighbours, it undermines the moral appeal of Israel itself. Despite Marwan's warnings, the more I knew, the more I wanted to reduce this oppressive military wall to a beginner climb. And for sure, there were some easy cracks on the wall. I also think that the desire to downgrade this wall comes from a visceral part of myself. I hate to be contained, I distrust authoritarianism and I value freedom over pretty much everything else. I could feel the lack of freedom Palestinians have and it hits a nerve. That afternoon we went for a walk to see if we could find some climbable cracks that were out of view of watchtowers. Over 
the thing with climbing these routes is that although there's no watchtowers here right now as you get higher you become in the visibility and therefore you're a risk That evening I read a story about an olive farmer whose trees had been attacked. Later, the villagers had protested. As the Israeli army tear gassed the protesters, they stood by as illegal settlers opened fire, killing a father of four, shot in the back as he tried to help a wounded villager. No settlers were questioned for this murder. The Palestinians were unarmed. This is gross. Later that day, we bumped into Manwar between his tours. Oh my God! The human always creative. I love this one. It's very nice. All right, it's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I take a video, I will keep it this always in my memory. You make me feel really... Oh my god! I can show you how, yeah? yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can teach you. See, these ones are actually quite um, easy to climb. See, like here, you can put your hand in the back. Okay. And your foot will twist. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> but I can show you how to do this as well. Yeah, okay. I will do. <laughs> maybe one day I will teach my people, tell me destroy the wall. Or maybe kick this wall away. We have now... You have a climbing wall, yeah? Yeah, we have some... I learned from you something special. We'll never forget. <laughs> like, yeah, I put my hand inside here. Yeah, so at the back of it there's like an edge. Yeah, like this. It makes this. it very easy. And then the foot goes sideways yeah. and then twist the beam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> I cannot do like you, That's but good. it's good start, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really good. Good. <laughs> it's something make you to feel it's nothing impossible. Can we go in some place, no soldier, no security? I need to cross to go to Israel. Can I go and go like how I go up here? Can I go down from another side? And can they cross without the humiliation system? without permission, without the crazy soldiers. This is more of the tear gas kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's a tear gas. Wow. You know, have some tear gas made in US, Jamestown, Pennsylvania. Okay. They came here, yeah. they support by, for sure, for free by American government. It's different kind, different you know, size. it's different. And this different, and what you carry first, different. Yeah. And this one also different. This kind of uh, tear gas bomb, it's be over the jeep, have three groups of pipes. Mm. Yeah. Every group have 100 like this. Oh, wow. Time they start to shoot automatically, the 300 take for them a few seconds to shoot, cover all the area. Wow. And look, any time the people put this two shoots yeah. in the world. We have some meaning for me. Can we, one day we will walk over this wall. As we looked up at the graffiti, slam in the middle, facing the hotel, was a perfect easy crack. Parallel with almost perfect size feet, and importantly, with no watchtower oversight. If we were going to create and share a route that others might be tempted to do, this was a perfect place to do it. Okay. Take your time, my friend. Watch out, don't go higher than this. Okay, yeah. go down. Yeah, go down. I think enough, my friend. That's it. Enough. Touch the end of the wall. Superman! Spider-Man! Spider-Man! How do you do this? I don't want to do this. 
Special experience for me, really. <laughs> it gives something special to us to yeah. feel more hope. Nothing impossible, I told you, in yeah. your life. That's cool. If you believe in something, nothing stupid to do. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for this, some, <laughs> this strange thing you make me to feel it's nothing impossible in front of the human. Yeah. Time you climb this wall in this easy way, really, really, I feel nothing impossible in this life. <laughs> One day, if you not climb this wall, we destroy this wall for sure. If we have special great people like you in the in the world. Extreme Zionist theology that seeks a one-state Israel as its ideological goal is increasingly present in the current Israeli government. Its settlement policy directly and continuously works to destroy the possibility of a two-state solution. Israel is using its strength to pursue its own extreme ideological goals, not just simply create peace. And these days, the wall has little to do with security. It is about maintaining a position of power to fulfill its colonialist aims, which can only be met while maintaining the status quo for as long as possible. It is sad that a nation built by a people who have for centuries faced horrific crimes at the hands of extreme ideologies are allowing their own extreme ideologies to guide their treatment of another people. Oppression. Oppression. And and the six, yeah. And the, 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 the number six A plus is like a beginner grade. It's like it means it's very easy to climb this wall. <laughs> and the R, five ten C is like an American grade system and the R suggests it's like a little bit dangerous. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, this, this is very easy climb. I am leaving here soon. Of course, climbing the wall itself changed nothing, but it did give us a reason to create a video and share this story with you. If you do come here to climb this route, don't stick your head over the top, and you probably shouldn't get caught. <laughs> <laughs>